Thanks, Brian. Is this on? So when I got the invite to come talk here, I thought that John and Brian and Corey really liked me. Then I got the agenda, and I realized I'm the very last speaker. So I've got to hold up to everybody else that's already been on stage and try to do better than them, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do. Um, my presentation is really on why you should hire a business manager. But I think that most of it's been gone over already. So I won't be up here long. It'll be pretty quick. We'll all get to go to happy hour before we go back to the airport with all these bags here. Um, I'll go through things pretty quickly. With Chris Ed, we've grown about $2 million in 20 months. So we went from about 3.2 to 5.2 million in 20 months that we've been with Chris Ed by listening to what they do. And it's one of the reasons why it's important for you guys to hire a business manager if you don't already have one, because if you're in a chair, you can't do the business side of things that you need to do to be successful. You're not going to be able to cover all the things, the brief things I'm going to go through in my presentation here. So day-to-day -day office operations. That means two different things for me, a non-dentist, and you guys as dentists. Day-to-day -day operations for you guys are drilling teeth. For me, it's spreadsheets, it's numbers, it's looking at where the business is. So we like to think that every day in our office is like this. Like we have our happy-go-lucky people here, and it's someone's birthday, we're celebrating, everyone's having a good time, but that's not reality. And we know that's not reality. We wish it were, but it's not reality. So a little background on me. My name is Ron Braz, the COO of JMY Dental, also known as Coral Springs Dental Center. We're a 21-chair, 11-doctor, multi-specialty practice. We bought our practice out of bankruptcy in 2016, and we were doing about $180,000 a month in production. Now we're up to about $530,000, $540 a month in production, and we're collecting about $520,000. So my, biz, my background includes business turnarounds, insolvency, which business bankruptcies, which is how I ended up at the practice. I also was the operations manager for a portfolio of marinas in the Caribbean and along the East Coast. So I lived the USVI principle before the Bahamas principle. I kind of put the cart before the horse there. Uh, my first job out of college was in computer networking, and it was the most miserable experience ever. I couldn't stand it. So my point is that a business manager doesn't have to have a dental background. I think that we've kind of learned that when you, Andrew, Justin, all these guys that have come from different industries that have helped build these practices up to where they are today to become multi-million dollar practices. So the difference between doctors and business managers, doctors, what do you do? You take care of patients. You do fillings. You do extractions. You do root canals, implants, crowns and veneers. You ensure associates are doing the right thing, hopefully. You're doing chart audits of them. You're also mentoring the associates, training the clinical staff, consulting on equipment purchases, and everything else you guys do with your hands in people's mouths all day, which I just don't understand. I'll look at spreadsheets all day long, and I'll watch the numbers. You guys do your thing. You keep your hands in their mouth and have fun with it. So as business managers, what do we do? We take care of everything. But remember, team is everything. You've heard that throughout the day today, that you're nothing without the team around you. We have to build these teams to help support me, to help support you, to help your business grow. If you don't have that team around you, you can't do it. I'm lucky that this year I brought my entire management team with me. We've got eight of us here at the conference, so I just want to thank every single one of them sitting back there. We couldn't have done this without them. We couldn't have grown to the 5 million, the little 5 2 that we're at right now. We're projected to go to about 6 8 this year, and we still have an upward potential that's unlimited, especially considering we have 21 chairs. We just added Sundays. We've had 8 to 8 Monday to Thursday, 8 to 5 Friday, 8 to 2 Saturday. Now we're open every Sunday from 11 to 5. It's allowed us to continue expanding our capacity. You hear John talk about it all the time. Add capacity, add capacity, add capacity. Well, you know what, when you do, it works. And it works well. So if you bring that business manager in to help you, they're gonna help take care of business. They're gonna help you submit insurance claims. They're gonna do the collections and billing. They're gonna help manage your non-clinical staff. 
They're gonna handle accounting, negotiate vendor pricing, handle human resources, equipment purchases, ordering supplies, manage staff schedules, help manage your doctor schedules, which we all know is extremely difficult, especially with the extended hours. So when you guys are in a chair doing this, how do you expect that you're gonna run the business? So you hit that nerve on the tooth, and boom, there's your patient through the roof. So if you all wanna grow a business, a manager is essential. You won't be able to grow to the size of an organization that you want unless you're completely stepping away from the chair. I think a lot of the guys talked about that today, that if you did wanna step away from the chair, what you had to do to get there, some of you may not be ready to step away from the chair. If you're not ready to step away from the chair, bring a business manager in. Let someone set up the system, set up the functions, set up what you need done outside of the chair, because there's a lot more to it. There's the marketing, the advertising, monitoring the phone calls, the billing, the collections. It's impossible for a doctor practicing dentistry to handle everything that needs to be done in a practice that's open six to seven days a week and still be effective. So team is everything. I know that's been said around here the entire time, and again, I just have to thank my team sitting back there, because without them, we couldn't have grown the way we have. I'm the one that comes in with the crazy ideas and says, let's do this. We're gonna open till this, we're gonna stay open till eight, we're gonna open on Sundays, we're gonna open on Saturdays, we're gonna add all this hygiene, and they look at me and go, you're gonna do what? Where are we getting these people from? How are we gonna make this happen? And I say, we're gonna start next week. You're gonna what? How are you gonna make this happen? What's that gonna be? So your team is everything. As I talked about in some of the other ones, team events are great. This was a color run that they did about a year and a half ago. Unfortunately, I broke my leg two days before that, so I wasn't able to attend it with them. But events like that help bring your team together. I know like a lot of what we talk about is staffing, human resources, things like that. One of our biggest problems in South Florida where we are is staffing. There isn't a dentist on every corner. There's a dentist every 20 feet. Within the block of us, we have eight dentists, eight dental offices. So you have to remember, we're in a service business with a medical aspect to it. This is still service, so we've got to take care of our patients. You as doctors don't want to deal with the human resource issues, the compliance, the payroll, the recruiting, the hiring and firing, the background checks, the training. It's one of the most difficult areas, especially if you're teaching seasoned dental professionals, because they say, you want to do what? You want to open till eight? You mean we're working past four? We have to work Friday? We have to work Saturday? Sundays too? Are you out of your mind? So staffing. We all know that staffing is a big issue. But it seems simple. Place an ad and then just hire someone, right? Isn't that what we all do? We place an ad and boom, you've got someone there. Well, you know what? That's wrong. It doesn't happen that way at all. We wished it did, but we know it doesn't. I know it was interesting because I got to sit into the rep meeting on Wednesday with the Chris Ad sales reps. And it was one of the things that Andrew and I got to bring up about one of our difficulties of doing this. They always say, add more hygiene, add more hygiene, add more hygiene. Right now, we're running six columns of hygiene on a Saturday. I can't find more doctors to work on a Saturday to expand it even more, so I'm limited. Same thing with a Sunday, I'm running four columns. I need another doctor. We fortunately got a text that a doctor that we were talking to gave us notice, now we've got a doctor every other Sunday that's gonna help us add the capacity. But when you're working through that, where's the right place to advertise a job? There's all kinds of places to advertise a job. Is it Indeed? Is it Career Builder? I don't know if anyone even uses that anymore. Do you use Monster, another one that, is it still relevant? Is it LinkedIn? Most people neglect social media. Social media is becoming one of the better places to look for employees. Are you playing the Facebook? <laughs> the Facebook is the way to go. You're gonna hit a lot of people with Facebook and it's new that they're adding all of these opportunities to put your jobs on Facebook. Don't forget about it. Or is it ZipRecruiter? What's the right place to look? We do a lot with externs. Some people don't like to hire externs. We go to the local schools, we bring in externs. We interview them, make sure they're a fit, and if they work well, they're the best ones to add to your extended hygiene. 
If you can get them in the right position, they're the best ones to add. But the process of sorting through resumes is tedious. At least where we are, a single listing can produce 180 resumes. And you're never gonna know what they are unless you look through all of them. So if you guys are doing dentistry in the chair and you're working extended hours, you're getting done at seven o'clock at night, when are you gonna start calling these people? Are you calling them at eight, nine o'clock at night? Is that what we're looking for, is for you guys to be killing yourselves and working even more, even though this is supposed to help you get away from the chair some? It's hard to find that right candidate. So this, again, is why a business manager is important to have. And I'm going very surface level compared to what a bunch of the other guys already presented today. But the business manager can help you get to that next level. Don't be afraid to bring someone in. It is difficult. You have to find the right person. You have to find someone you trust. But do not be afraid to bring someone in to help you with your operations of a business. Also, John will tell you this all the time. Happy, well-compensated teams equal results. It's repetitive. Everything you're hearing is the same over and over and over again. Accounting, it's another function that most dentists don't want to deal with. There's a lot to the accounting, especially as you grow. As you get bigger and bigger and you start producing more and more into millions and millions of dollars, it's not the same as worrying about, am I getting $600 for that crown? Is it $900 for that crown? What's the insurance reimbursement? What's the copay? Are we taking the copay? This allows you to not worry about it. You bring someone in that's gonna help build your team like I have, luckily again, I gotta thank them again because I'd be nothing without my team, that you don't need to do this. Your daily, weekly, and monthly forecasting, your annual budgeting, your daily billing audits, your monthly reporting to your CPA, if you're not doing that in-house. Your revision and review of your monthly financial statements, because sometimes the information you give to your accountant doesn't come back the way you wanted it to. It happens often, but someone's got to look through it and someone's got to deal with it. Evaluate financing plans. Help your treatment planners. What's the best one for your office? Green Sky, Care Credit, Lending Club? For me, financial reporting is a true litmus test of the business. While, we work, while you guys work for the love of your profession, isn't it nice if we all make a good living and make sure the money is there? So this is just one of the reports that I run on a daily basis. It's got our Chris Ed bonus information on the right hand side and what those goals are, which is the rolling three month average for those of you that aren't aware with it. I've got doctor's goals that I expect my doctors produce based off of some historical data, the number of patients they're seeing, the number of production they do, what their goal is, their plus or minus, their patient scene, their exams, and we track this on a daily basis. Because this truly tells you how your business is doing. I've got some doctors that made their goals, I have other doctors that didn't make their goals. Billing and collections. One of the most underappreciated positions in an organization. If we don't bring the money in, we don't get paid. We don't pay our bills. We don't have a job. Also, what they do, what my insurance department does in billing and collections, doctor's notes, sometimes are a struggle. They're not what they need to be. And you guys all know that when you submit these claims and you don't have the right notes, what's happening? You're getting a denial, it's coming back to you. You've gotta resubmit and now that's costing you more money to submit the same claim because the notes weren't right. X-rays, did they take the right X-rays? Are they taking x-rays of buildups? That's our biggest thing lately. You've got to have an x-ray of the buildup with the crown. And if the buildup isn't there, you're not going to get paid for it. So there goes the six or $800 crown that you thought you had that you're not going to get now. Interoral pictures. Somebody else talked about it earlier today. I'm not sure who it was. Makes all the difference in the world. And I've got to credit our new clinical director, Dr. Ziegler, for really pushing it in our office and making sure that all of them are at least starting to. It's a work in process. Nothing happens overnight. But making sure that the interroll pictures are there. It allows you to diagnose through pictures and show your patients on the screen what's there. But it's also important because it can show for the insurance what you've done. Also, some doctors like to add codes. 
they want to beef it up a little bit, like I need to make a little bit more money on this one. So my oral surgeon tries to like add in some things that really shouldn't be there that are included already. They've got to make sure that they're not there because they don't just deny that part of the claim, they deny the whole claim when it's overcoded. So if you've got doctors that are putting their codes in, you need someone that's going to help you with your billing and collections. Your business manager is going to oversee these guys and make sure that it all happens. When you start, your business manager is going to handle a lot of it. When you get to our size, you can't do that. Collections, it's a dirty word. Nobody wants to call the patient and say, you owe us some money. Or to call the insurance and sit on the phone with the insurance company for 45 minutes for a $200 claim. But again, if we don't do that, we're not getting paid. We don't have an office. We don't have a staff. We don't have anything. So if the cash doesn't come through the door, we don't get paid. Another important area is that your business partners need to be part of your team, no matter who it is. It may be your financing companies, Green Sky, Care Credit, Lending Club. I sound like I'm about to plug all of the Chris Ed companies that we work with. Every single one of them is amazing, though. Treatment 24-7 really helped us determine that our acceptance rate was so much lower than we thought it was. And it also let us see that the doctors that say, no, I'm only diagnosing $1,500 at a time, yet their average is $6,000, and their acceptance rate is like 12%. It's really telling. And you guys were the first I heard. <laughs> Local Med is another one. We get, on average, about 100 online bookings a month. 80% of those are new patients. That takes out the phone factor. That takes out the mess-up factor. That'll help you immensely. Five Lakes. We recently had Five Lakes run our insurance analysis for us. We're going to stage two now. Another company. If you guys haven't worked with them, and again, I don't get anything out of plugging these companies. They've just helped us out and are helping us realize what we need, how we need it, who's going to help us, what insurance companies are good for us, which plans are good for us, which ones to drop, which we are going to drop one because we're getting paid nothing from them. And they'll help with all kinds of other stuff. And obviously, the bottom one, Chris said, none of us would be here without him. So wherever you are, John, thank you. We appreciate you. You've done a lot for all of us. And if you're still thinking of joining, do it, but listen to what they say. If you don't listen to what they say, it's not going to work. If you listen to what they say, you too could have the type of growth that we've had. You could go from 3.2 million to 5.2 million in 20 months and be projected to make another 2 million. So like I said, it was going to be short and sweet. I'm the last speaker of the day. I'm sure everyone wants to get out of here. Doctors, allow a business manager to help you get to the next level. You can't do it alone. Don't expect to do it alone. Allow you to do what you do best, which is dentistry. If you're ready to get out of the chair, that's a different story. You could still hire a business manager to help you. Back to the Bahamas principle. That can help you get to the next level and get to the Bahamas. Eliminate the staffing and financial headaches. Retire financially secure, secure and allow your organization to grow. So this is just showing what our staffing looks like. This is probably about a month and a half old, so there's some positions missing. We're at 57 people with our doctors and assistants and everyone else. You're not going to get there if you can't have someone operate the business or you're out of the chair operating the business. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of doctors. It's a lot of work. And again, you guys can't do it alone. Allow yourselves to let someone help you. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Thank you to my entire team. Thanks, Chris Ad. And enjoy. <laughs>